Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today I'll be showing you how to control opacity or blending in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so we have our two clips right here. They're both one second long and I both have them in compound clips. And so there's a couple ways we can control opacity outside of the Fusion page. First method on how to make a fade is by going up to our effects library, go to our toolbox, video transitions into our cross resolve. And then we can just put that onto our clip like this, but sometimes it won't be synced to the correct spot. So we just need to bring this point down over here. But you can see our markers over here and we cannot extend this clip further. Have our cross resolve be in the middle of our clip. So you just will not work. And we have to move our footage over like this and then we could have our fade just like that but sometimes you won't always be able to use this method so there's other ways that we can control transparency let's take our clips and sync it to this beat right here that i have marked out with a marker and so we really want the middle of the fade transition to be on that point where our transition is so we can just put our clip over some space for you our fades could be about five to seven frames so we're gonna do like one two three we can do four frames and bring that over and then we could Bring this over another the same amount three frames over one two three just like that and if you have extra clip or extra room on your clip you can drag that over so you just have like something like this and the way we control opacity is with the white dots at the end of our clip like this if we take those and drag it over to something like this you can see that we're actually making a linear fade just like this and that's one way of doing it and another way of doing it is actually using the opacity control in the inspector over here so if we click our clip you can see our opacity control over here so we can just keyframe right here and go to our end keyframe again and go to the original Original keyframe and then lower that and so we now we have our fade just like this and now we're going to go into fusion how we're going to control it in fusion let's right click it open a fusion page now we're in our fusion composition and there's two ways that we can control opacity and the way that i do it the most is that i add a merge node just like this and then i add a background node connect it to our merge node and since the background is on the green input we need to switch that around so we're just going to click our merge one and hit Control t and that'll switch the inputs around we're going to go to our background and make sure that our alpha is all the way down so you see that it becomes transparent and then we can control the blend right here on our merge and that controls the opacity of our clip the second way of doing this would be to add a channel boolean so we're gonna click on media in and add a channel boolean make sure it's not the 3d one so go down here there we go let's view, view our media out and on our channel boolean you can see we have our operation two red two green two blue and alpha so what we need to do is change this two red from the red foreground to the red background because we're using the background input on our node red foreground change that to red background green foreground change that to green background and etc like this we have it all done over here then for our operation we're going to change it from copy to subtract you can see our clip or is gone but the way that we're going to control the opacity with this is go to settings and then you control it with the blend just like this and that's what we're going to keyframe to control that those are the two ways to control opacity that one's a little bit more efficient because there's one node but let me just do it with our background node again just like this then I can show you how I keyframe my opacity. So since we're doing about a seven frame fade, we're gonna keyframe at the beginning and then we're gonna go seven frames in and keyframe again, go to our original keyframe and then lower this value to zero. And then we hit something like that. We can go into the spline graph and change the graph of our blend like this. But I usually just do a linear graph like this. If your graph is already like this, you don't have to change it. That is best for me. I sometimes I can move that out a little bit just by bringing this up and we have something like this. Now we have a fade like this. The way to sell the fade even more is if we do a scale. So go back into our fusion page and the way I would add a scale, just add a transform node behind here. Let's keep him at the beginning and go towards the end, keep him again. And then just put this value out with value of 1.2. Then let's go into our spline graph, have our transform, our size in our spline graph. Control A to select all the keyframes. Let's move this up like this and let's make our graph look something like this and now we have a zoom in we don't want the graph to be sharp because we are fading in so we won't even see this initial movement if we have a sharp graph so a nice loose graph will work and now we have something like this all right here we have two clips or you're probably going to do a double opacity fade so let me just mark out this one first clip is two seconds and then this last clip is one second i'm going to adjust that a little bit but let's say we're going to want a beat that's over here and say we want like a beat that's in the middle so like over here so let's just stack our clips like this and so we want to sync to our first beat so that's over here so we kind of want three frames for each side so one two three let's put three frames there bring this forward and then cut this back and so now we have three extra frames in the middle of it's gonna be here and then we have three frames here so it's gonna be a fade we have six frames in total for our fade let's go into our fusion page open a fusion add our merge node let's add our background node Hit it again Control t on the merge click our background node put the alpha down and then we could 
keep her at frame six so we're going to keep him our blend and then go to the beginning and then keep him again at that blend to zero then we have our fade just like this and then we want to make sure that this is a linear graph just like that so i just highlighted those keyframes and hit shift l yours is already linear that's all right and then now we have this phone that we're going to sync to as well so let's go three frames back for this one two three then keep from the blend again i'm going to go back to this value at frame six and then we change this value to either 0 0.4 or 0 0.6 0.4 means that the clip underneath it will be more dominant when we change the scene and then 0.6 will have this scene that's more dominant than the other scene that's underneath it. I'm just going to do a 0.4 and then for our second beat, go to our spline graph and let's look at our blend. Let's go back to over here to our second marker and then let's go three frames back from here as well. One, two, three, keyframe the blend again and go forward one two three and this is another three frames one two three now we go up to value of one this time and make sure all, all our graph is linear so control a and say shift l but now everything's linear and for this one back one i'm actually going to make this one non-linear i'm actually going to make an s graphs underneath it so let's go to the marker and then let's adjust our values like this so the most vertical part of our graph is underneath that marker and that'll sync nice to that now we do something like this which should look good and and let's see how it is that looks pretty good to me in order to sell it we're going to add some more movement and this time i'm not going to do it inside the clip but i'm actually going to do it on an adjustment clip so let's bring this down a little bit go to our effects library go down to toolbox effects and then add an adjustment clip and add one i got from my media pool over here bring it above here and then stretch it across once you have our adjustment clip we can go inside fusion on it i'm just going to align my playhead to the point that we need to sync at right there it'll actually show up in our fusion page as well so let's grab a transform node add it here probably going to do a zoom in and another zoom in so let's go three frames back from our midpoint which is our sync point so one two three keyframe our zoom over here then let's go forward about halfway around here is fine and then zoom in say like a value of 1.2 that works and then we could highlight our keyframes and then Make sure our vertical point on our graph is underneath the marker, just like that. Maybe it's a little too stiff. So what I can actually do is lower this and it'll be less, have less impact, but it'll be some nice and smoother. All right, that looks good to me. And then let's do it for our second point in our graph over here. Add another transform node, three frames back again. One, two, three, three frame right here. And let's go forward probably to the end of our comp. And then we can either zoom in or zoom out. I'm going to do another zoom in just like that. The value of 1.2. Control F our keyframe so they are in the middle. We adjust our spline, do something like this. Put my playhead there. So I like to align the playhead to the graph that's over here. And that looks pretty good to me. So now we have a double zoom in like that. Maybe even looser again. Just like that. We have our fade just like this. And that looks pretty good to me. If you're interested in learning about how to make a twitch shake in DaVinci Resolve, click this video right here. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.